Gross. Ah, there's the uh, the big hero of the qualifiers, right? I think uh, pretty much every region but C. I know I did see get picked a couple games in C at least, or at least one. But uh, Hoodlink was uh, far and away the most popular in South America and Eastern Europe. And uh, it looked good doing it. I saw it finish with a above 50%, like 53% win rate or something too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, some questions about the hero first. Then I got a few buffs, some tweaks. It's got a little bit of a control pick off. It even tends to hurt you a little bit in the draft because you're like, oh, they have that break. You know, there's some heroes that don't like it. So uh, looking forward to see uh, what they want to do with it here. Most likely a four, right, for the Hoodwink. Yep. Yep. Uh, Ember, though, spirits in general are pretty solid against Hoodwink. You catch a score relatively easily. You just bring it down like Ember and Storm. Just It's food for them. And your Bushwhack, however mm -hmm. strong a stun, has the longest cast point. Because she's a squirrel. She has to throw a whole rope, you know. It's, it's a big gargantuan task for her. So it's difficult for her to catch anything True. with a little bit of mobility. And you have an Ancient Apparition Squirrel. Uh, sorry, Ancient Apparition Hoodwink. Let's call her by her name. Yeah, Not course. the best combo for catching anything. It's a little awkward, yeah. I, I agree on the Hoodwink. Like, it's just kind of a generic... Well, it's not... It's maybe not generic, but it, it feels something similar to, like, Alina, where you just have chain stuns you just sit far away and throw stuns constantly and she's running through the trees mm -hmm. being annoying decent amount of burst <laughs> but yeah ember spirit it's Rusi's best hero i would say that's that's currently strong like storm or ember would be his two top heroes i'm kind of surprised that undying uh Whoa. didn't like try to ban him out as a player what's uh magnus okay mag tb big damage yeah that is interesting the lane looks pretty good, right? If it's like Mag and Hoodwink. I mean, there's some concerns about the AA yeah. and the Terribly lane, I think. Because uh, we still don't necessarily know what heroes are going to go down there. I assume it's going to be Mars plus one. But it could also end up being like an Ember four or something weird. Because they're, uh, they're picking. I mean, their ordering of the picks from the cut is kind of strange, right? Like we have Luna, Mars, and Ember. But they have 10th picks. So they one would assume they have some sort of flexibility happening here. I'm going to guess... Maybe it's a Mars 5, because I know that in in NA, that's mm -hmm. kind of the latest trend, uh, at least with regards yeah. to pubs. It, it, it could be a Mars 5 with, like, tr you know, tree and offlane for Frogus, or it could, you're right, it could, could be something weird. Maybe, maybe we're, uh, you know, scratching at the bottom of the barrel here or whatever, but uh, it's, it, it could be something weird with this team, given the players that they have and the, the roles that they normally play. Yeah, it's just a strange way to, I mean, no one's going to, like, necessarily want a 10th pick of four right i mean unless you just like really wanted ember that's what this says to me is they really wanted ember and they didn't want it to get banned because ember is traditionally a pretty good hero versus the terror blade they saw like minimal like introductory stuns from the hoodwing of the aa it's something that ember should be able to dodge and so they just say like oh okay we can you know we can just make this work but undying aren't falling for it they're still banning core heroes and uh they did need that first hero to go in for sure to to help set up for like the hoodwing of the aa follow-up uh, yeah. Mag does not want to initiate, right? So the Sand King definitely fits. Yeah, they needed a, a playmaker for sure. And it it might be a Sand King mid. I mean, it could mm -hmm. just as well be a yeah. Sand King offlane, but Luna plus Tree seems like you'd be pretty comfortable playing a kind of passive Magnus lane into that. And then that would let the Sand King get get some more, some more levels and a little bit more farm and be the active hero. Because from the offlane, it's a little bit hard to get off to a good start you have to get off to a good start to be active to be an active hero and it's because you're an offlaner it's a little bit hard to get off to a good start so they might be running some sand king mid because i have been seeing brow play at a decent amount uh, yeah, but we'll I, see i think it's definitely the way to go it's because i just uh yeah. i agree with the idea of it's it's too risky if you're saying king starts the bad game like they are kind of the, the whole linchpin for this draft right now to, to get things off the ground so <laughs> you don't want to really risk it in game one of the ti qualifiers yeah although Mag versus Ember is probably a pretty decent matchup mid too. So maybe you're just so confident that that, that your Mag mm. will be huge and, and unkillable that it's like if you want to run into his jungle and try to stop him from farming because there's no active hero, it's like maybe he's right. too tanky. Maybe now, that's the idea. There's a Magnus and a, and a Sand King. How hard is Frugos trying to convince them that Core Rubik's <laughs> core <fine Rubik>. here? <laughs> like how hard do you think he's going right now? He's like, oh, dude, no, if I get eggs, this game's over. He's like, giving it right now. They have oh, a Luna oh, and a Spectre. Was a Luna. All right, we got a four Luna. Okay. What are we doing here? Okay. That's a three Luna. three Luna. Luna. Let's go. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, that's how you fix the core to core. You just, I'm assuming there's going to be an Ags Builder Luna. I can't imagine any other thing that you could use with the offlane Luna. Auras? And then the TB gets... 
<laughs> could you could you offer? Could you like pipe Luna? Is that a I thing? Don't, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Pipe One because this this used to be a support. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I like that. I like this. Okay. I mean, uh, the, the Spectre versus TB matchup, though, is still not the ideal matchup. At least Spec can ignore the TB uh, for the fight, so you can I'm, at least do that and then kill him. I'm fairly sure that's a losing matchup as well, is, is TB versus <laughs> Spectre. Then again, I mean, TB, TB 1v1 beats almost any carry is the, yeah. is the yes, problem. Yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe they think the Luna will pressure the TB incredibly hard in lane. And the thing is, though, this also gives the Sand King a pretty free lane because Spectre is just this mm -hmm. sad melee hero that, you know, is like... Uh, has physical resist and armor and all these resistances, and Sand yep. King just doesn't care. He's just tons of magic damage over time. If you just sit there and Sandstorm, Spectre can't really do much. It's also more space for the Hoodwink now, too, because rather than being the Magnus mm -hmm. in the offlane, you can put the Sand King there much safely, uh, much safer, and now the Hoodwink can like roam a bit more. But And there's the use for your break as well. You, you are... Uh, yeah, that's true. That's a, that's a super solid point, actually. Mm -hmm. Spectre can die 100% in this game. But... I, I do get the, uh, you know, you brile on Magnus and a uh, core Magnus, you break the blink with Spectre instantaneously. So mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty nice. It's, it makes it almost impossible to get off a good RP against, against Spectre. All right. So as the game is about to begin, I want to hear the, just the single word prediction that I don't want any explanations. I don't want any logic. Jenkins, first you. Undying's the best team. What? That's more than that's one four word. words. That, okay. You, that's Un undying. Uh, you're not, for that. Yeah, you're not Ember Spirit or whoever speaks in four. I don't remember. Uh, undying. <laughs> yeah, that's Ember. All right. Nice. Let's see if it is Undying and Dio takes game number one or the cut surprises us all with her off lane Luna to take this game away. It's going to be these wonderful panelists, the best casters that anyone could ever find in the whole world. It's Trent and Jenkins. <laughs> Now he's just lying. All right. God, now we're just not Canadian. <laughs> yeah. What what just happened? It's horrible. My, it's my Canadianism win. got removed from me. Well, we're here, guys. So let's all get through this together and enjoy ourselves uh, some lovely Dota. Already a couple wards placed down here as uh, Nielsen's taking you for a cruise around the map. Um, we're also joined today by the lovely uh, Knoxville. So expect some stats to get going at some point here, and I'll do my best to pay attention to them, but you guys can just enjoy them in the chat when I undoubtedly miss them. And Wait a minute. It's, it's going to be great. Undying has a sheesh? So does black and yellow. They're... Oh, hey, come on. Yeah, right, actually. North American teams are so uncreative. We're all just hey, copying man. each other. Got to get the bag, all right? <laughs> don't, don't hate the player. You know, if they got that in at the, right at the start, uh, they'd be they'd be making bank, but I think nobody nobody wants to buy them. It's like too late now. All right, I'm here for NA Dota, uh, and uh, a Luna is here for NA Dota. So yeah, off lane Luna. Uh, can't say I've seen this one making the rounds too much lately. Very interesting. Has an urn currently to start, and I mean I think he might just be playing four, dude. Oh, he's playing four and Vols playing off lane. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking maybe something like this would happen because Vol wasn't really a four player in the first place he just mm -hmm. plays anything that's kind of what his shtick has been like he's this incredibly high skill versatile player i mean it's literally his name it is, is he goes by versatile sometimes so yeah it's uh, th this this makes a lot of sense to me i, th I think uh vol's probably been practicing it in his pubs he just has his profile completely private so i wasn't able to to see I will say, I kind of hope we get a little bit of that, like, 3.5 action, where, like, maybe Frugals get a little bit more farm than normal. I mean, he's already 4, so we know he tends to be, like, a little bit greedier on the Rubik and stuff, so... I would like to see some bigger items on this Luna eventually. I think that's I think that's definitely his style, and uh, I also think that that's generally the style for the Luna 4. Like, you get items on, on this hero, and... Good lord, that, that ultimate with the Aghanim Scepter does so much damage. You can just solo carry and, and solo kill cores. Now, bottom lane, uh, talks about the Spectre versus the Sanking. So far, things looking uh, not too bad. They're, they're a little banged up over there on Saber Lane Moon Meander, but uh, Pingu going to try and just get some pulls, contesting with the Hoodwink, and uh, I feel like uh, this is a pretty damn good set for a Sanking. Yeah, Saber if you're... going to be happy. If you're not feeding in the first couple of levels and getting dumpstered, that you feel really good on Sanking. His level 1 through 3 has... It's tough. It's not a it's not a good hero between level one through three. You get really good once you have some levels in the sandstorm though. 
Well, Frugos using the speed of the Luna to grab a Courier up top there. Nicely done, but they're, they're going to try and punish that by going on to Vol with the meta. And he'll just back away. I uh, will say it's kind of funny that uh, they're doing the classic move versus the tree at down bottom where you, of course, cut all the trees. Uh, not as effective as it used to be because they grow back much faster, but it also hurt Toadwing because, you, you know, you, you kind of need those trees too. So a little bit more reliable on the acorn shot, which is a bit rougher in, in the earlier levels. But, of course, it's worth it to uh, ruin Pingu's time. Dude, the tree synergies with, with Hoodwink are so strange. Like, have you played Timber Hoodwink? It's one of those things that feels yes. like it should be awful, but it's pretty goddamn good because you just always have a, a tree to timber chain to. As long as you're careful and you're not cutting Hoodwink's trees when she's trying to stun somebody, it's it's genuinely pretty good. But tree and Hoodwink, another one of these weird kind of tree-based matchups. Mm -hmm. I had a, a three-hero bushwhack get uh, timber chained during one of the Eastern European matches. It was it was yeah. like a fresh three-hero bushwhack, and the timber like comes in to help, and they just start running away. You're like, oh no, bud, I'm Not helping. Away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the way she goes. Oh mid, nice dodge there. Ooh, brought a little bit early, perhaps hoping to get uh, a drag back there. And uh, looking really good for Bryles. This wave comes in. He's already two CS up. Yeah, this definitely makes sense. You're a heavy physical damage hero against Ember. With that being said, Ember is not going to be... You, you don't have anything to peel through the Ember shield, so that's okay. Got the big stats there from Nox. AA crushing it on the win rate in 7.29. Uh, it's not a huge surprise. Really started picking up at the end of uh, Season 2 and then also did uh, pretty well at the Major. The hero's just looking solid. Not able to get that pushback either. Rusi's got the jukes. And uh, Moomiander will grab the water rune too, so solid pressure on the runes here from Undying already. Yeah, and the runes matter a lot it, with uh, with regards to anytime there's a spirit hero mid, especially when it's like a farming versus farming matchup, because both heroes want to just like spam their spells and go jungle, which right. uh, this is a nice block here on the easy camp from the cut. They understand that Bryle just wants to farm the easy camp up, and so they've literally just blocked it. With the yeah, century I feel work. like that's getting more and more popular. Uh, you, you see it on both of the uh, the small camps in the mid lane now. Because as you said, that, that's their whole goal. you know. And uh, Mag even more relying on that uh, farming action than the Ember. At least the Ember has like rotation potential at level 6. Yeah, Ryle, exactly. I mean, he might be able to turn a gank with a TP or something, but making moves is not the easiest thing to do. Yeah, uh, although you can just go farm the enemy. Yeah, camp. he's going to go steal his small camp. But meanwhile, up top, they are getting the chase down there. Dubu getting uh, Lucent beamed up here in Vol. Calculating, trying to find the angles. And, uh, oh, with the illusion. Oh, it's locked. Okay, it doesn't matter. That would have been still huge, pretty though. cool. Oh, he's going for the courier. Don't die first. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> I think he wanted to suicide to the tower anyway, right? Because, like, oh, no RP? one's around. But, oh. Oh, nice cut. Dude, Rusi, that was sick. That was sick. I see you. I see I you, big boy. I find most of the newer heroes to be very annoying to play versus at first, but I actually love playing versus Hoodwink because I think that's one of the best feelings in Dota is cutting that tree. Yeah. You feel like a god whenever you do it. It's one of those things that makes you question if if more people did it, if more people knew how easy it was to do, would the hero still be picked and, and considered so good? It's one of those weird things where it's like, mm -hmm. the, it could trend where it's just bad because everybody's getting used to cutting the tree. And what's interesting is that's usually uh, a meta thing about heroes that happens when a certain counter pick occurs. Not necessarily such a specific like execution counter play of just like, oh yo, just cut the tree. It's like any hero can do it. So if we got really good at it, it could just like murder this hero in one day. True. And people are picking up more range, uh, range quelling blades these days too, because mm -hmm. it's just the highest damage the highest damage item you can buy for even ranged heroes. So, yeah. oh, nice double spear. Just yeah, for harass. All right, Frugas said, this guy does not fear towers, and that's because he's got the backup oh, coming. Oh, he missed. His lights have been so good this game defensively, but offensively, he can't get it to connect. Frugas still getting low, chasing and running off to the east, but it's really Tomato being chased under the tower that we care about. Flame guard going through. Moomiander coming to try and help out here for Tomato, but will eventually go down. However, Vol. Caught under tower, just outside of the range. Very likely to go down here as well. There's an illusion in the back trying to block him off. Oh, he gets through. All right, still juking and jiving, but slowly going to fall. 
And uh, we're all evened up here now at 2-2, two to two, as Tomato actually gets the final touch there. That was nice. Uh, so he'll get the kill with the illusion. Still, I, I think you're really happy for if, if you're the cut, just because you've got a Spectre who's free farming bot, you've a tree who's taking some space mid. That was during a catapult wave, so the tower's at like 60% HP on the top lane. That that was really good from the cut. Just what a great rotation. Rusi's doing quite well for his, uh, his first game with this team. Yeah, and they're right back on the pressure too. Bring up three heroes right away. Vol trying to get level six, so Frugos can give him a little bit of space here on the wave. They just want to threaten with the arena and see if they can bring them again. Also, still holding that ward behind the tower, too. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane to counter all this pressure uh, and the uh, the fact that the Spectre's just alone, Saberlake's just pulling this to the camp. And uh, catch up to his own Magnus. Sanking a Magnus really killing on the net worth right now. Pretty far ahead of some of these Radiant heroes. Yeah, that's one issue with the the cut lineup is that they have a lot of pressure, but because the Luna's not their care, oh, top lane, Dubu. Yeah, that, that one looks free. He got speared just into a chase of a Brile. The RP on it too. Anyone else coming? Tomato, hurry! All right, all right Meta's pop. Who are we going for? They're opting for Frugos here. Sullivan had a pullback there. Doesn't even need it. Brile is just whopping down with the big hammer. As uh, he's almost at 4,000 net worth. Vol's going back under the tower because Rusi's here. Brile says, sorry, bud, you're on your own. And they're even going to haunt for this. He saw the writing on the wall. He just got out. So, Toronto to fall. So, it really comes in a little bit too late. Does hit the pro strike here, though. But just wondering, like, I, I guess I'm just assigned to this tower now. And my Terror Blade, uh, you're assigned to the junk. Hmm. It, uh, that means SMD can go bot and free farm down here. Because there's no Sand King anymore. It's just going to be a hoodwink. So, who cares? Yeah. And the cut is... The cut's really impressing me. They're, they're playing this really well. They're keeping the constant pressure up, just like you said. They are not letting up for a second. And I think Jeez, they're on them again. Saberlight's dusted inside his sandstorm. Has to do the oh. mini burrow strike to try and survive there. I think he thought another spell was coming out. And he gets a hood delivered a bit too late. And the well, Dubu is. <laughs> That's the worst feeling as a support, man. I'm coming to save you. They're just dead. You're stuck behind. And they have absolutely turned this top lane into a bloodbath. Now, six to three in favor of the cut, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, I mean, I I personally was not giving this team enough credit. They seem they seem very comfortable. They Rusi especially is kind of controlling the game right now, and it's not an easy lineup to do this into. You're playing against a team that is designed to outfarm you. Terrorblade yeah. Magnus. And in it's it's the gold lead is even in a game where Undying, even if they're losing in kills, should be ahead based on these heroes. So this is looking really good for the cut so far. There is one hero that is still pretty massive, though, and that is Brile. Coming up with another RP soon, and man, they're just going to keep it going. Slow pressure. Brile's going to have to figure out, like, how much can I dedicate to, like, farming? Because now my Terrorblade is assumedly going to take a lot of my jungle camps, because he's been forced out of lane. So my own acceleration is going to slow down, and they're going to try and create a chase down here from Saberlight. He actually doesn't go in aggressively, just gets arena. Starts with a Burrow Strike into an Ice Blast. Brile still lurking away, but remember, there's no Blink or anything here, so... It's not like there's going to be some giant turnaround play as a snipe comes through. Get down, Mr. President. Think he's got the living armor and also apparently the bulletproof armor. So dive in front of Vol. The boy. That's a that's just a real support player right there. It, it is, yeah. They just can't that, stop themselves. They can't. If that was a core playing support, he would have... Vol would be dead right now. <laughs> just diving as fast as possible out of that situation. Absolutely. Sentry ward up on the high ground there. It's like keep pressuring mid. Meanwhile, Pingu happily holding back that bottom lane here. As Spectre is in the jungle. So, uh, not looking too bad. Great start. Looks like uh, the blade mail might not actually already be done here. As I don't see any of their components. Dude, Pingu's huge. He's level 7 on tree. And he's got maxed out living armor. He's just chilling in lanes. Getting, getting the solo XP. Yeah. He's loving life right now. Every time I look at him, he's just by himself somewhere. I'm not, I'm not sure. I feel like the, the farm spread isn't quite where you want it, but I guess part of that is that, like, obviously, Frugos is for Luna, so, like, he has no glaive, so his own push is pretty bad, so that leaves Pingu as the only support that can do this that easily and, of course, still has global uh, helpfulness there with that living armor maxed out. Yeah. Oh, Ruin spawns top. Three mana. Oh. Oh, okay, they're just guaranteeing it with the RP. Uh, wow. 
Okay, so upside, they kill the Ember. Downside, that's a lot of big cooldowns in a game where it kind of feels like they need to get active a bit here to try and stymie some of this pressure. It is true, but the issue with the cuts lineup, on the other hand, is that even though they've been doing a great job pressuring, they don't exactly have great tower hitters. So it's not like it's the easiest thing to punish all of those abilities being down. You would, you would need to go smoke and get a kill. And even if you get a kill, you might not end up getting a tower from that. Yeah, that's and true. Catapults are very easy to abuse on like the first tower, but the second one, not as... Not so uh, much, yeah. Yeah, not very straightforward. I mean, that's why they're also just like running their faces into this mid lane, I think. Two hero burst strike while inside the arena. Long range ice blast is not going to connect here. And that's going to leave Saberlight uh, his death. Haunt comes through. Rusi getting low though. Jumping past Dubu. Oh, the dodge. He's going to jump away. I think he's going to be fine. Rusi. Vegas the plays, balling back up, thinking about coming back in here with some help of living armor. Oh, perhaps he's found Moomeander. He's trying to 100 to zero him, but not going to be able to do it. He just goes down, and Moomeander is going to be massive now, by the way. Well, that was yeah. great. Yeah, that counts as a solo kill, so big That was like big a lovers. thousand XP! Yeah. So, oh my god. Solo kills are so dank, dude. Uh, that that is the only reason Pudge is remotely viable as a, as a hero. It's like you solo kill some Crystal Maiden, <laughs> and you get, become relevant again. <laughs> this has happened with Moon, except on oh. a core and on a real hero. From downtown, the ice blast hits. Sharpshooter's also back. Bushwhack into the charge up. He's dead. Woo! Oh, you just gotta sit there and wait for it. Yeah, it does, the Sharpshooter does so much damage, especially if you get a veil, which he does have a veil. But this Aghanim Scepter veil plus Ethereal Blade. Mm -hmm. One shotting people on on Hoodwink is the most hilarious thing in Dota. Yeah, I feel like we talk about damage amplification in terms of like picking multiple heroes that have it, but Hoodwink just feels like because of the raw amount of damage and the break and stuff, and you just go like Veil plus Eggs, like you do it all by yourself, which is pretty cool. So it's true. You know, some supports are like it feels like you can get all your team fight from a single hero, and Hoodwink feels like you can just get all your pick off. Yeah, all your damage essentially. Yeah, and stuns as well. Uh, it's it, it's interesting because like there's this HP threshold in Dota where there just aren't enough items, there aren't enough item slots to have the, enough HP to survive it, you know. And mm. Hoodwink does like that amount of damage. It's it's like two thousand or something. Like no support's gonna have more HP than that. Yeah, even and even course, fully slotted. When you have an AA, that now means every single hero in the game, core or support, is pretty much dead. Exactly. This combo. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Scanning. They're uh, oh, trying SMG. to use their best detective clues here. To find Mr. McDuck. Oh, well, they're going to run into a uh, Pingu. So, Triant doing Triant things with the living armor there. It's, you know, it's, it's dead armor in this case when you throw your body in the way of the smoke gank. But nonetheless, it saves your specter. So, uh, mission yeah. successful. He's chilling. He's chilling. I think you're cool with that as a as a five. That but Once again, though, you know, looking, looking at both of these lineups, it is becoming clear that... Undying has the better farming, and there isn't anything from the cut to take towers and punish the fact that they're just farming, which is presumably why this last pick Sand King came out, is because they know that he's kind of the best hero right now in terms of holding towers. Like, nobody uh -huh. picks Tinker, nobody picks Zeus, nobody picks these Keeper of the Light, the, you know, those sorts of heroes. It's like Sand yeah. King's the only one, really, for holding these tier ones. And I feel like it's, Tide gets banned every second phase. <laughs> So yeah, and easy play there. Brow grabs the kill. Man, they are getting murdered on these other two tier one towers. They really are just like throwing away their lead because they feel like it's their only play. So they try and get that pressure. And these defenses of the mid tier one have uh, completely stalled out the progress for the COD here and really just put on dying in the driver's seat of this one. I, I suppose hypothetically what the best play option probably is now and what it probably was before in retrospect of course i was not thinking this until watching them run at these tier ones mercilessly probably like smoke to this enemy triangle and try to try to kill terrorblade and then put wards down and try to take it over because i don't think you're going to really get towers with this the cut lineup but you can constrict the map you can get kills but in order to prevent undying from farming you need to go to where they're farming and stop them from doing it it also feels like by having the train protector it's actually limiting some of the kills the cut can get because undying aren't even bothering to stay at the towers if they don't have tb with meta they just leave because they know that the train's going to delay it anyway so of course that leaves you to limited kill opportunities as they do grab a good kill opportunity in the mid lane 
as he's just by himself. Tries a haunt play there to maybe get some sort of an escape. And they're going to try a little bit of revenge here, too. Arena Spear. That'll pick up Bryo, but Saberlight really comes through with the epicenter. Rusi, he's got one last jump. Oh, it's not far enough away. Gets throw strike there into the bushwhack. Chained up into the cold feet as well. Oh, perhaps not, but still goes down there with Tomato to assist. And now, Tomato might even want to use this meta to push forward, but there's a few too many heroes left uh, on the cut. That's exactly what you said again. They're just they're just like, you know, whatever. We're going to out farm with these heroes that we have. We mm -hmm. know that there's a tree, so pushing into them. All the cut can do is fight us. So what we're going to do is just is just farm. But the cut... They're going to three they heroes know. smoked, yeah. And they have the this Eclipse, cool. but they don't have the Arena. This is a hard one to land. They're going to miss the Spear. Uh, that was it. That was our initiation. We, we don't have Overgrowth. We don't have Arena. What are we doing Ooh, here, guys? Boy. You better figure out a new plan. Because you lost Frugos, you're going to lose Pingu. You just better hope Bull gets out of here. Man, I mean, I, the idea behind that play is really cool because you could see that Undying was not expecting it. Not not at all. But with no blink on Vol, there's no easy way of jumping on top of the either of those two heroes that they ran into there. Like, wh who initiates between Luna, Treant, and... Mars without Arena. I, I don't see how they get on top of people. You'd have to get really lucky, get some angle where, like, you can come in and spear, and it's the perfect, like, lucky angle. But what are the chances that that's going to happen? I, even if they hit that spear, I don't know if they die. It's like, what if taking, like, so many Eclipse beams and everything, too? Sure. Certainly yeah. an aggressive play. As uh, We'll have a little jump up there from Rusi, the scan connecting. Both teams throwing out their scans here. So, yeah, they have just been calmly farming it up, and now... If you want to run into this dire side, we have an Orchid ready on Brile, heading in towards the BKB next. Uh, TV has the Manta Dragon Lance. Sanking has Blink Hood almost bought. I do not envy any team that needs to fight these guys at a tower because it looks terrifying. Yeah, they're big boys and they're really comfortable on Undying going into the late game because of what we talked about during the draft with which uh, with Ancient Apparition, with Terrorblade. Like, TB is going to win any 1v1 carry matchup. And then AA on top of that, it's another hero that makes you win any 1v1 carry matchup. So Spectre is never going to carry this game by by going late against these heroes. You're, you're going to have to be active if you're the cut. They've actually assumed that the cut is going to defend bottom. Brile TPing down here, waiting for someone to show. Saber Lake kind of feigning some weakness, and now they're just going to send in Tomato with the uh, Empower. So this will probably let the cut know they're all down here. And so to counter that, they're trying to make their rotation. But now they're smoking it with Saber Lake. As the Blink Burrow Strike. No forward vision here, though. So the smoke pops. They need a ward. Oh, he gets an E5 oh, throw triple. Them together. The three hero burst strike. It's just the two of them together, though. How much damage they got? They're going to get through Goss. The Hawk comes through. Pengu able to survive. So despite the great initiation, only going to get uh, one kill. But meanwhile, in the river, it looks like we got an RP and an Orchid to get the kill onto Rusi. So I'm dying. Very happy with that uh, invasion. And oh, the Bushwhack going to grab Pengu. Leander finds him in the trees. Of course, a safe spot to guess where a tree and player is. And down he goes. And here's where the towers go down. You take a lead because your heroes farm better and the enemies can't push. And then you just run at them when they make mistakes. Pretty pretty simple. That was my uh, first sheesh ever. How was it? I've never I've never sheeshed before. I don't I've never sheeshed before. I'm not a great judge. Right. It, you know, well, kids you these throw days. it out at some I know. I'm trying to be hip with the time. So maybe sometime during this cast you could try a sheesh. When it's appropriate, and we'll you see, know. we'll see, we'll see how yeah. I'm feeling. It'll about be it. good. It's uh, it's not easy to stay hip with the kids these days. You, you gotta keep you. up there, bud. You yeah, know, we gotta you get do. ourselves some TikToks. Be real, real cool, real jive. I think they say. You know, the kids aren't even using Instagram anymore. Instagram's like dead. Oh, you mean the Insta? Oh yes, yeah, sorry, Insta. Yeah, nobody. What are they using? Or is it Drugs. the gram? I can never remember. What what are they using? That's a great question. Yeah, I don't know. Probably just uh, hanging out, playing Dota with their mate mate. That's what I would guess. Yeah, that's what I, I would agree. Get that's down the to. most. That's the most hip thing that you can do, Trent. That's true. Oh well, I see some heroes grouping up on the dire. There's smoke. Where are we going? Ooh, ooh. Meanwhile. The Radiant, they have a ward and a smoke of their own. All right, what is our, our dream fight here for the cut? There's a haunt in 40 seconds, so the dream fight isn't for another 40 seconds. I feel like that's a pretty crucial part. 
Uh, a backstab coming through. All right, they're kind of lurking nearby. Unfortunately, their smoke is near to popping and they're under a dire obs. So that could be bad. And there's the initiation. Oh, yeah, I think he's getting hit. Probably didn't even need it. Now, Fergus coming through. Oh, the arena, three heroes. All right, let's go. Eclipse in one second. Fergus dropped the big damage. Help the squad. It's a BKB Brile. He's looking okay. The Eclipse comes through. Now the Epicenter. Another Blink Pro Strike here onto Frugos. Brile with the RP2. Gotta try out Kathrushi for the finish. Oh, even a Sunder on the Vol. Sure, why not? As the Essence Ring. Trying to survive here. See if he can pick up a kill on the way out. But looking unlikely as uh, the supports will go down. But they're going to grab four kills right now. But the side of Undying is Pingu does escape into the river. D dank escape by Pingu. He's like, please, <laughs> don't kill me. Don't kill me. <laughs> yeah, that's a interesting positioning from the cut. You could see that they wanted to... Oh, they see him on a sentry. Yeah. They're faking it. They no one escapes. It. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Pingu... Oh, and this uh, DD is going to get a roast too, perhaps? Possibly. Oh, they're faking it. Speaking of faking it, I mean, they walk in towards the Roche pit and they're like, you know what? I don't know. I feel like they're going to instantly feel like TP here and come Roche. Why don't we just like take their Ancients and see if we can grab a free kill? Yeah, cool idea. Maybe Spectre would walk up like after some Roche scan goes off thinking like, oh, we need to contest this somehow. Oh, it might be Frugos. Oh, oh what there a classic, he is. dude. You know, someone's going to come here, guys. They're going to think we've backed away. And Frugos will be the big sacrifice there. Yeah, it's it's starting to get to the point where it's very difficult to fathom how the cut wins a single team fight as Vol. Oh yeah. boy. I, I think a team fight, you know, assumes you have all your players there too, which it's hard That's to true. do when they keep dying. Yeah. It's it's tough. It's tough for them. Let's see. How do how do we fight if we're the cut? I think the last fight, if SMD didn't die, it was kind it was actually pretty well executed. They killed the supports of, of Undying first, and they used the overgrowth on Brow's BKB. That's about all you can ask for. Yeah, and they of course like a big arena too. There was some very yeah. solid stuff. Meanwhile, Saberlight is just waiting for someone to show up here, pumping the epicenter in the tree line, but you will return to the Roche kill as they hand it off to Tomato. And there's Scotty not and anyone around by. Oh yeah, he's huge. As uh, not so pointed out, it, he tends to have a huge percentage of the teams that were at the highest in the NA DPC, with Envy coming second. Just uh, you know, everything from my carry when it comes to Undying. That and, is uh, interesting. Yeah. Because I mean, part of that, that is way also in season one. Yeah, I think part of that too is like it's so heavy with the one and the two for this team as well. Um, typically, right? Yeah. Depending, on, depending on the there. season. Yeah, and yeah, he's chill for sure, too. Yeah, Saberlight's just like, I make space, I make plays. Yeah, every Give game. Give stun. That's his life. Uh, before Luna, uh, probably wishing they were in the draft before they picked this hero. Maybe try <laughs> and figure out something a little bit better as he's just throwing out loose themes. Is Please. Brow really, he's Let really not go. willing to Orchid him? <laughs> he just, dude, that's so BM is that he's saving the Orchid for somebody more useful, exactly. like valuable. <laughs> like that's... He's like, do it, try it, Rusty. Come on, try me. That is BM. Where's the admins? It's just respect, that's all it is. Sure, sure. Respecting yeah. Rusty's play, of course. That's what we go for around here. Yeah. Well, Undying at this point, uh, Crossing some T's, maybe gonna dot some I's to the cool kids say on the gram. But uh, it, it's looking real good for them. The uh, the high hopes of the cut have been quickly dragged back to the reality of the situation here as they face uh, a very tough ending to game one, potentially coming soon, and some hard thoughts heading into game two. Here I am they... writing them off. What am I doing? They have a Spectre, Jenkins. Anything's possible. See the Spectre? Oh, oh no, it's a broken Spectre. Uh, oh no. <laughs> the break actually just kills you anyway, so. Oh, God. Are you guys gonna play the game? Oh, man. How, are, how do you still spam Little Nick's chat wheel after kicking oh, him? Oh, come true. on. That's, that's not cool. <laughs> if I was undying, I would spam that. Yeah, that's actually the, the best option now for any of the teams in the qualifier versus the cut. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, they are linger there. They're falling apart, man. It's 
<sighs> you need you, okay. If you can get Luna Ags, any fight is possible to win. It does True. a significant amount of damage. You can have three Scotties on Terra Blade, and if you lock down this guy isolated, he will die to the Luna Ags. Now the problem is, Frogus has no items and no gold. So he's got a point, Booster Jenkins. Okay, sorry, he's got a quarter of an eggs, <laughs> a bit over a quarter. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah, include that extra bit. We need that. All right, yes. that's important right now. We do. We really do. Now the question is, can Undying just start hitting the barracks? Are they're are they going to take all the towers first? They're playing it safe. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, most certainly. They can just do whatever they want at this point. All right, we need some crazy, like, blink spear into arena separating the rest of Undying so they can't help out Tomato. And then you refresh and spear him into your fountain. All right, perfect. Just do that, guys. Refresh spears. Oh, God. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's how deep we need to dig in this game, I feel, you know? It pains me that you're right. We need a refresher on Mars. <laughs> it's, it's the only way. It is the literally the only way. We gotta get him to the fountain. Uh, I think we need a refresher on Luna Eggs, too, in the now, fountain. You know, that one has actually saved me in a couple of games, I will say. The, uh, the refresher shard on your, like, Luna, who's way too far behind. It's like the only hero I actually want the refresher shard. Yeah. You know, help me out, Roche. You, you can win games off of the Luna Eggs. It, it does... Once again, talking about that HP threshold where, you know, you only have mm -hmm. six slots. Oh, oh that's not that's so good. good. It doesn't look like there's much HP on the Spectre, speaking of HP. No, yeah, he is, you know, right at that 2,000 mark. And I think just about every Undying hero can, can kind of put you over that threshold, especially with Ancient Apparition at this point. They have a lot of items. Are there any two heroes on the un un Undying that could not kill Spectre in a 2v1? No. I, I actually <laughs> I don't think, think I there is. I don't think there, there are. Yeah, I think actually any two of these heroes can just kill your Spectre, which is a bit of a problem. As the Burrow Strike comes through, catching Vol deep in his base, just trying to prep and set up for the dream fight. But it's a nightmare instead. It's Undying who kick things off, grab a couple easy kills. The arena comes out just for his death, but the Ice Blast flies through as well to catch Rusi. And they're just standing inside your own arena, taking down your buildings. And they're trying to find a solution. Volt comes in. He blinks into a Burrow Strike by the looks of it there. And he's gone. There's a Sunder. Tomato helping out. In, and that's a GG. And I don't blame them. Haunt, dance around, destroy my eardrum. Sure, why not? Uh, but it's Undying who absolutely destroy game one after a promising first couple minutes there for the cut where it seemed like they could grab a bit of momentum in this one. Uh, their plan stalled out, and, they, well, it was like a plane stalling out. It was a complete nosedive at that point. Is that what happens when planes stall? That's terrifying. Don't tell well, me yeah, that. They, they, they can glide. It's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, but not no, not much gliding uh, going on. Uh, maybe gliding into the loser's bracket, uh, if anything. But the cut, you know, the, the early game was, was pretty good. I was really impressed with the pressure that they had put on in, in the first 10 to 15 minutes, which is something you would ex expect of a high rated solid stack of decent pub stars right like mm -hmm. it, that point of the game is very similar to competitive is is like the early laning stage and the rotations outside of laning stage so they did really well with that so maybe they just need something to make it easier for them to 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 execute after that point some jump right. hero to kill the terror blade or some push hero so that they can use that advantage that they had gained because undying like they had an idea of how to play the game and the cut just played right into it. They couldn't. They couldn't do anything. Yeah, the the greater concept one in here from Undying, as it looks like they kind of pointed out the weaknesses of the cut from this draft, and uh, that uh, means we're gonna need another draft here. So stick around, everybody, and we will be back with Avo. He'll be joining us for the uh, the draft of game number two. We'll see you then.